Okay, so this is the first um, day of notes for Unit 3. So since I'm recording this um, and going at my own pace without anyone asking me questions or to slow down or repeat anything and you guys aren't able to participate and answer any of my questions during notes, this is going to be a lot quicker um, than normal. So a lot of you might have a difficult time if you're just playing this video straight through. Um, you might have a hard time actually keeping notes and taking notes at the pace that I'm talking. Um, so because this is, a, this is a video, use that to your advantage. You know, pause it, rewind it. If I say something that you don't quite catch, go back and listen to it again. Um, so this is going to be like the notes we've been doing. There's going to be minimal words on the slides. So if I say something um, and you're, you know, not sure how to spell it or something, pause me, Google it. You know, this is a, a much more, um, this is a lecture where you have a lot more control over the pace that I'm going. So um, work, work at your own uh, pace and, you know, but make sure that you're, keeping up with everything I guess don't get too behind um, but if this video seems short and you're like wow our lectures are usually way longer than this that's because no one's interrupting me and I'm not asking anyone questions so um, it will probably most likely take you much longer than the length of this video to actually get all the uh, notes that are covered in these slides so I'm just gonna do three slides um, today which is gonna be pretty quick so this unit is about the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution. As you can see in front of me, this is just uh, the first, the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution are sort of just the first um, half of this unit. The second half of this unit is um, the presidencies of Washington, Adams, and Jefferson. Um, I think after Jeff Jefferson is where we pick up with Unit 4. So this is a pretty big unit, um, as you saw by your vocab. There's a lot of terms on your vocab. So um, just doing three slides today, uh, There's not that's not necessarily a lot, um, but we will, uh, the test for this unit is going to be on Monday the 26th of this month. So we're going to be covering a lot of material in about three weeks. So it's important that even though I'm not there, um, that you keep up with all of your notes and everything. So let's jump right in. So we left off um, at the Second Continental Congress, right? We, we sort of paused once we started talking about the Declaration of Independence and uh, the Second Continental Congress, and we began focusing more on the actual war of the American Revolution. So now we can sort of go back um, to 1776, and it's not like once we declared uh, independence inside the Declaration of Independence that everything was just, you know, that was where everything ended. They were like, all right, you know, we call it quits now. We can all go home. That's not what happened. We had to have a central authority to govern ourselves, right? I mean, we have no monarchy now. Um, there's no parliament. All we have is the Continental Congress, and they have to set up some sort of uh, rules. Now, today we know the law of the land, right, is the Constitution, but um, these guys are not going to write the Constitution. That's going to come later. Um, uh, there's going to be some trial and error here, right? We're a brand new country. Um, we're sort of making this up as we go, inventing a whole new type of government. We're going to practice democracy in a way that no one else has really before. So um, what we're going to do here isn't really going to work, but it's going to help us figure out uh, the right things to do and the wrong things to do. It's going to help us figure out what works for uh, central authority and what doesn't work for central authority. So when I say central authority, I mean federal government, a, a system in place for the federal government. So um, 1776, the delegates need to establish a standing government, right? Even though the war isn't over yet, just because we're fighting a war doesn't mean it can be chaos and we have no government. We need something. So um, at the Constitutional uh, not the Constitutional Convention, at the Continental Congress, the second one, right, we're in Philly, uh, one of the delegates from Pennsylvania, John Dickinson, you see him over there on the left, he writes a document called the Articles of Confederation. So um, the Continental Congress passes it, and uh, the Articles of Confederation are, are very different from the, from the Constitution that we have today. Uh, the word confederation 
itself is different. Now, today we are the United States of America, right? We're a union. We all function as one country. But a confederation is very different. A confederation is more like uh, we're all friends. We're not necessarily family, but all of us are, are friends with each other and we'll all work together. Today we function more like we're all family. We all are intertwined um, and what happens to one state can affect the rest of us. But um, we have the, the way that the Articles of Confederation are set up is that everybody is sort of a lot more distant. And one of the main reasons why they do this is because they were afraid of giving the federal government too much power. Giving the federal government too much power sort of links back to the tyranny that they um, saw or viewed coming from the monarchy. They don't want another monarch. They don't want another king. They don't want another parliament with the amount of power that the parliament in Great Britain has. They want to set up a new type of government um, that has much less power in the central authority, in the in the federal uh, level of the government. So. Um, the Articles of Confederation set, up as, set us up as a confederation of states, not a union of people. Um, that's a very important distinction to make. We are not all, you know, to, obviously we, it's hard, hard to think about because back then you have this mindset today of we're all Americans. But then they saw um, each other as Pennsylvanians and North Carolinians and Virginians. You know, they didn't all necessarily see themselves uh, unified as Americans. And so because of that, this sort of is going to make it doomed, right? We need all of us to work together cohesively. This is going to be one of the very early problems with the Articles of Confederation. So the Articles of Confederation say that we are a perpetual union and that we have this firm league of friendship. You see what I was saying about we're all friends, not necessarily at that family level yet. We write in the Articles of Confederation that we are in a firm league of friendship. So uh, by using this phrase, all states, all the 13 states, maintain their own independence and freedom. Okay, so every state is functioning separately. North Carolina has its own uh, deal going on, separate from what's happening in Massachusetts, and the two are not related. Um, now, we will have one, this one level of government that will um, pass laws that affect the entire country, but for the most part, everything that... Um, that that level of government is going to do is going to be basically worthless uh, because every state's sort of going to be doing their own thing. So we're going to have a unicameral legislature. Unicameral means one house, right? You should have learned that in civics. So today we know we have a bicameral legislature, meaning and legislature is Congress, right? So um, that means that we have two houses of Congress. We have the Senate and the House of Representatives. Um, and Back then, during under the Articles of Confederation, we just had one uh, branch, a unicameral, right? One legislature, meaning we had one Congress, um, and that every state was represented equally, regardless of land size or population. So um, we're going to see some initial problems, but we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, the Founding Fathers had no experience creating the Articles of Confederation, or creating a government, okay? So when they make the Articles of Confederation, this is a long process. It's not like John Dickinson wrote this and they're like, bang, love it, pass it, move on. They debate over the Articles of Confederation for over a year, okay? So this was a, a very tiring process. Um, so we finally are going to formally adopt the Articles of Confederation. In your notes, I would abbreviate it as AOC. You see down here it says AOC. I would write that down. It's going to be a lot to write Articles of Confederation every time. So I'll start saying AOC to sort of make it uh, more fluent in your mind. So we formally adopt the AOC in November of 1777, um, and that's that's when it passes the Continental Congress, right? It still has to be ratified by uh, all these states for it to be put into law. It's not going to be ratified until 1781, okay? So it's going to take three and a half more years for us to even agree, each state to agree, um, that this is actually what we want to do. So we'll talk about why that took so long in a second um, when we get more specific about the weaknesses. So 
one of the initial problems of the Articles of Conversion, or the AOC, is that it had no power to enact laws. It, enti it was entirely dependent on a state on state enforcement of law. So uh, we know today we have the legislature who uh, creates laws, but who enforces the laws? That's the executive branch, and um, that's the office of the president, right? We have uh, things that fall under the president, and um, that level, the executive uh, branch of government, they're the ones who enforce the laws. So uh, there's no branch like that under the Articles of Confederation. The federal government will pass laws, but it's up to the state to make sure that they're, um, that those laws are actually being put into place. And that's a problem, right? Because what if North Carolina doesn't like this law? What if, uh, you know, the U.S. passes a law that, um, I mean, I don't know, that says college is free? Well, what if North Carolina doesn't like that? They don't have to enforce it. Uh, so it, it makes it difficult on, you know, the people living in North Carolina compared to the people living in Virginia. And there's lots of uh, discrepancies between each state. So uh, that's an issue there. A second problem with the Articles of Confederation is that the federal government doesn't have the power to tax people. Now, we know that taxing is going to be a bit of a touchy subject for the Founding Fathers, right? That's sort of what got us into this whole business anyway. So it makes sense that they would be a little gun shy when it comes to giving the federal government all this power to collect all these taxes. So so, in order to pay for the war, they have to ask states for sort of donations. So, you know, every state, they sort of uh, divvy it up. You know, we're going to, it's going to take us this X amount of dollars to pay for the war, so every state owes this much. Well, very few states are actually going to pay what they owe, right? Because there's no one to actually make them do it, right? Every state is supposed to be enforcing their own laws. So, if a state, um, you know, is going to pay less, let's say North Carolina decides that we don't want to pay that much, well, South Carolina is going to be like, well, I don't want to pay that much either if North Carolina's not having to do it, they're going to pay less also. Um, so very few states actually pay what they owe. Some don't even pay anything at all, and there's virtually nothing the federal government can do about it. Now, a third really, really big problem with the Articles of Confederation is that it takes the unanimous agreement of every state to um, for the Articles to go into effect and then to amend them. So uh, this basically means to pass any federal law, all 13 states have to agree. That is absolutely insane. If I took a vote right now in class and said, um, you know, like, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's decide that um, quizzes are going to count 30% uh, instead of 15%. That might be good for some people who uh, crush at all these quizzes and everything. Um, or people who do really bad on tests, they might want the quizzes to balance that out. But it's going to be hard to sell that to everyone. So that's why it takes us three and a half years for the Articles of Confederation to even go into effect. Because all 13 states had to agree. Um, the reason why it took us so long in that particular situation is we had one state holding out, sort of holding every other state hostage um, until they gave into that one state's demands. And that one state was Maryland. So we know Maryland's a pretty tiny state, and they're sort of landlocked by all the other states at this point. And um, Maryland refuses to ratify the AOC until all the other states west of Maryland agree to give up all this western land that they have. So, um, you know, Pennsylvania, New York, all these states west of Maryland uh, or north of Maryland have all this extra land now that we're, that we're winning the war. Um, everything from their state over to the Mississippi, right, all that land now belongs to these states. Maryland can't get it because they are not, their border is not there. So um, they basically say, you know, well, we're not going to do this until everyone gives up that land because we don't want to be the only tiny state. Eventually, they all do it, but it, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty crappy situation that we've gotten ourselves into already. Um, so, like we said, no, we can't impose taxes. No executive branch. Um, another problem is that the federal government can't regulate trade with uh, the under the AOC. So every state is sort of making their own rules about the economy and trade. Um, and a fourth problem is that there is no judicial branch. So like each each state has courts and stuff, but there's no Supreme Court. There's no um, big federal court, which means that when one state um, has a difficult time, has a problem with another state, there's no one to interpret that law. There's no one to uh, settle any sort of big problems between states. And that's going to be a, another big issue as we head down the road. So Let's go back to the fact that we can't levy taxes. Because Congress can't levy taxes and everyone's not, um, you know, putting in their full weight on this, 
they can't pay off their war debt. So when this when the war is over, the states are asked to give money and uh, to help pay off the war debt. And combining what everyone pays, they only get 17% of what they actually need to pay off their war. So because of this, they can't support an army financially. And a lot of our soldiers are um, are actually going to go unpaid even after the war. It's going to take uh, a very long time for all of our uh, uh, military families to ever collect the money that they actually earned uh, during the American Revolution, which is sort of crazy.